There's a strong link between excessive speed and accident risk. Telematic systems generally use the road speed limit as a way of assessing the risk associated with a particular driver. But in fact, the driver's speed in relation to the speed of other road users is a much stronger indicator. And that's why we've developed what we call the Safe Speed Database. I'm going to cover the Safe Speed Database in this presentation. And the best way of explaining the principles is really to start with an example. Here's a stretch of the M25 approaching Junction 28, heading north. The traffic's moving fairly freely and there's a wide range of vehicle types. From the clip it's very clear that one of the vehicles is moving much faster than the rest. Now a traditional approach would be to compare that vehicle's speed with the speed limit, but with telematics data we can go much further than that. So I'm superimposing a satellite view of the same stretch of the road and using our safe speed database to access the detailed information we have on each of three short stretches of that road in that direction. This vehicle looks to be well above the 90th percentile of the traffic and this data gives us a much better indicator of speed risk. This applies particularly to rural roads where the statutory limit can often be far higher than the safe speed for the road, even in good conditions. One simple fact which underlines this is that rural roads account for 82% of car accident deaths for just 42% of the distance we travel. There have been a number of academic studies of this and the common conclusion of many of them has been that the risk of a vehicle's involvement in a serious accident increases exponentially in relation to the variance from the mean speed of free moving traffic. The graph I've shown on the left shows the increase in risk of accident for a vehicle based on its speed relative to the mean of other traffic using that road. In simple terms, the risk starts to escalate at around 12 miles per hour above the mean. The risk increases further when there are other factors involved, and these can include driving at night, a lack of driving experience, fatigue, and of course weather conditions. As you will have seen from that stretch of the M25, our approach to this has been to build a real-time database of anonymized and aggregated data from a large number of fleet vehicles. To demonstrate the depth of the data available, I'm going to take a look at the speed distributions available for a small selection of roads. I'll start off by zooming into the map and take a look at a section of the A5199 near Wigston. The distribution seems to center on a mean of somewhere around 45 miles an hour. Now if I pick a stretch of the A426, running parallel to the M1, here I can see the mean is somewhere around 40 miles an hour. If I move back in closer to Wigston, the distribution comes down to about a 30 mile an hour mean, and then if I move out further on the 5199, it gets up to around 50 miles an hour. But the best way of demonstrating the depth of the data that we have is to look at a couple of small unclassified roads. This first one's heading for a village called Saddington, and then another one heading north of Saddington towards Fleckney. So the key features of the database are it processes 30 million vehicle events per day, updating the data in real time. That information is drawn from more than 1 billion miles covered by commercial vehicles every year. Currently more than 1 million representative distributions in the database, and it's an immensely powerful tool in helping to assess the risk associated with speeding. The best way of demonstrating the principle is to go and drive the road that I showed in the photograph. Uh, the roads between the villages of Foxton and Barrington, just south of Cambridge, and I've highlighted here on the map. So I'm going to start from the Barrington end. Just leaving the village of Barrington. Speed limit now 60 miles an hour. Fast forward to the first bend, which is a right angle bend turning around to the left. Then fast forward onto a level crossing where you can see the road surface is quite rough. And fast forwarding to the second bend, which is a right angle bend, taking me into the village of Foxton. Having driven that road now, it's interesting to look at the data we have stored for it. As for the other roads I've shown, we have a huge amount of information available. And the first thing that is obvious is that the mean speed is somewhere actually around 30 miles an hour, which is surprising given that the speed limit is 60 miles an hour. The second important point is that the speed limit is up at the 99th percentile of the distribution. 
And in fact, the relative risk of accident starts to increase dramatically once a vehicle is above the 90th percentile, which is actually just around 42 miles per hour and still well below the speed limit. In the final part of this presentation, I'm going to talk about how we make this data available to our fleet customers in order that they can provide drivers with feedback and help to reduce their accident rates. Here's a screenshot from one of our vehicle route reports showing an individual journey. Each of the waypoints is color coded according to speed and there's a pop-up display available against each point to show the speed percentile for that stretch of road. Each day is then summarized in what we call a driver briefing and that shows driving profile in terms of speed in blue, acceleration in green and braking in red. We calculate the average percentile ranking against each data point for the day and present that at the bottom right. And we now also calculate a speed index based on a score which is weighted by the number of data points in the day where the driver is in each of five different speed percentile bands. And that's shown at the bottom right. If you would like more information, then please do take a look at our website where there's a much more detailed explanation or get in touch with me using the contact details on the screen. Thanks very much.